Okay, so we swapped handlers, and now the guardian is going to be the one actually doing this exercise with the dog. So what I'm going to have you do is put, uh, there we go. We're going to put one treat, which are you right hand dominant or left hand? Okay, so we're going to put all the rest of the treats in the left hand. You already got them there? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're just going to wait as soon as, and we're not going to correct. We're just going to wait as soon as he looks up at you. I want you to raise it four inches in front of your nose, then go straight to his nose. But keep him right on your, on your knees. There you go. But yeah, he's used to just bulldozing his way towards them. Maybe try a sniffle. Try a sniffle. A little bit louder. Not a sniffle. Not that there you go. There you go. Raise it. And give it to him. Watch. watch. Say the word watch when he touches it. Alright, so transfer hands. The treat is the reward, so don't worry about petting him. Watch. That's all right. That's why we're practicing. Now I wouldn't have you extend the, I, I was kind of showing you right from the get go. So right now just go like this. Don't worry about paw, the length thing. We're gonna do that okay. in the days to come. So okay. right now we want him just to understand when I look at the human, that's when a treat is coming. So a two second movement, one second to raise it, one second to go towards his mouth. Watch. Watch. Let's try it again. Good job of restraining yourself. Watch. Uh, don't say it oh. until it touches his lips. Watch. There you go. Watch. Don't worry about it. This is the great thing about dogs. They're very forgiving. <laughs> Perfect. Except for the pet. Watch. Perfect. He's got pretty good camera awareness. All right, let's shoot, shoot me real quick. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice this in the house. Lighting probably isn't the best with me behind that. How's this? All right, so we're gonna practice this in the house, uh, just in this sort of scenario, when nothing's going on. Eventually we wanna do it, and you guys both should practice this. Eventually we wanna do it when the TV's on really low volume, or the t uh, stereo. Then we're gonna gradually crank that up until it's like blasting. So we wanna do it gradual over the course of several days. So eventually when it's crashing sounds or whatever the commercial is or the television program he's able to filter that out and focus exclusively on the handler that's offering him the treat now at first we're just gonna go like this one second one second I'd like you guys to do that for the next couple of days but after you're about three or four days in then you go one second two seconds then eventually one second three seconds and so this part always stays the same duration you're not ever slowing this part down you want to go really fast and then this is the part that you slow down and goes in a straight line directly towards the dog's mouth. So eventually when we get to the point where we dog does it inside under any condition, no matter what the distraction, the garbage disposal, the, you know, whatever, still sits down and looks at me, then I would have you practice it in your backyard. Now first practice in your backyard where there's nobody nearby. But since we worked with the dog, the little puppy that lives next door, we know he's going to be out at times. So maybe we call our neighbor and say, hey, can you let Buck out in the ba backyard? Now, Buck is a little bit of a bashful puppy. He's a couple down this. He's a border uh, or he's an Australian Shepherd puppy. Um, but if you're looking at, uh, if Buck is out there, he's going to be a little bit distracted, even if Buck's not actively barking. So that's going to be harder for him to focus when that's going on because my, now my attention's divided. But we pre keep on practicing it in the backyard until I can focus consistently, even with another little puppy out. Then eventually, when you're on your walks, you stop every once in a while, turn and say, watch. He sits down, you give it to him, and you do this when there are no dogs around. So eventually you have done it on all these different scenarios. So when you do have a dog or a skateboarder or somebody's coming by, you can stop, put your dogs back to where the skateboarder is going to be coming and do the watch exercise. And your dog is focused this way and the skateboarder is going behind him. So this gives you, it's a very powerful tool. It's very simple, but it's a powerful way of getting your dog to stop and give you exclusive focus and then to get that reward for doing so. So that's how we teach our dog to watch.